Hi folks, PK here again with a longer video going into more detail of some of the features of my 2015 entry to the Hackaday Prize, a serial video card that I call VGA Tonic. I came up with the idea for VGA Tonic while looking at the number of single board computers and dev boards that I had accumulated. Now, most parts that I have don't have graphics output, and even for the parts that do have graphics output, you know, everyone can use a second monitor, right? Graphics is an interesting problem to target, mostly because it's so shrouded in secrecy for whatever reason. At the same time that we have all these small multi-core single board computers, graphics cards themselves and the drivers for those graphics cards are generally distributed as binary blobs. As for open source firmware on board the graphics cards themselves, that's practically unheard of. Well, most of the parts that I have support SPI output at somewhere between 5 and 50 megahertz. So our results are quite successful. Uh, the 62.5 megahertz SPI interface that you can see in the background on the Raspberry Pi makes for an excellent demo, but it was an outlier in my parts bin. If 25 frames per second is acceptable for that 60 plus megahertz part, is 2.5 frames per second acceptable for a 6 megahertz SPI interface? VGA Tonic puts a lot of effort into letting you compromise in the delicate balance between frames per second, color depth, and resolution. So VGA Tonic will always present a constant 640 by 480 to your monitor or television, but internally it'll accelerate lower resolutions and bit depths. So it has power of two reductions in resolution and color. So think 320 by 240, 160 by 120, and 8060, and four bit, two bit, and one bit color on top of the 640 by 480 and the eight bit color. So the options range all the way down to 80 by 60 in black and white. And you know, that's not useful for every scenario, but you'll know that a single part can allow screen refreshes and all you have to do is push 4,800 bits every time you need a new screen. So if 20 frames per second is the target for that, 96 kilohertz SPI will get you there. So SPI is an excellent medium speed interface, but while designing the PCB for VGA Tonic, I realized that I wanted to have a programmable oscillator for future expansion and hackability. So that meant adding a microcontroller to control the oscillator. So with a microcontroller on board, I was actually able to add asynchronous serial into the firmware as well. So with the asynchronous serial working, uh, I first added a frame buffer mode, which is of course a charitable description. It's more useful for maybe digital signage than as a display interface. But you can do passable video at 80 by 60 in black and white. Uh, in the background, you can see Hackaday's logo and mascot, the Jolly Wrencher, spinning at 5.3 frames per second. But fun demos aside, I also had the crazy idea to fit a terminal emulator into the microcontroller. On board, there's a tiny font with 96 ASCII characters in that tiny space, and VJ Tonic supports around 90% of the VT52's escape codes. You've got a full 40 by 15 characters in 256 colors to play with. Switching gears, while well, video games tend to try to update the entire screen many times a second for normal computer usage, say reading, surfing, and coding, the average frame refreshes only a portion of the screen. So VGA Tonic includes hardware accelerated position changes to deal with that scenario. There are a number of other notable features on board as well. SPI should work natively with 5 volts, 3.3 volts, and 2.5 volt logic levels thanks to the Xilinx CPLD. Additionally, there is an administrator mode on the microcontroller. If you connect by serial to it, you can fine tune the programmable oscillator to have your display better sync to VGA Tonic's pixel clock. VGA Tonic can be used like an AVR and a Xilinx development board as well. There's GPIO on board if you want to do something completely different. These options put the size of VGA Tonic at about three inches by three inches. I'm, I'm open to suggestions if that's too large of a, of a part. Additionally, although VGA Tonic's core functionality is working nicely, it would be fun to someday release a few alternate firmware versions. First priority would be composite video output on board. It requires a clock change on our programmable oscillator and some output timing changes. So, but if you prefer TV output over VGA, it should eventually be doable with a firmware swap. Second, the frame buffer RAM is a full four megabits. So technically 800 by 600 at eight bits per pixel would fit. If it's a worthwhile eventual goal to have an 800 by 600 based output with an alternate firmware. For now though, 640 by 480 guarantees us the highest compatibility with whatever displays are out there. Anyway, that's my longer VGA Tonic overview. I hope I was able to show some interesting features and applications of VGA Tonic that I couldn't cover before. I hope you'll follow along with me here and on the Hackaday IO site as I update VGA Tonic more and more in the future. And thanks again.